Hey, what's up everyone? Danny here and we have just passed into 2022 and this is going to be my official studio slash basement tour um, starting the new year off even though I've been down here for like three months now but people have been asking and I've been pushing this off because I've been doing small modifications and uh, upgrading this but we're at the point where it's fully usable now and uh, I can start giving the tour. So we'll start on this side of the basement. Initially, I envisioned it being like a theater area because we have this big wall back here. I'm either gonna do that or turn this whole section into a green screen area where I can have the walls and floor green screen. I haven't decided yet. For now, it's just the space that I use my 3D printer in. And then moving on to this portion. So we have a couple of my long boards that the, I cut these probably close to a decade ago, like around 2012 or 2013, when I kind of ran my own small long boarding business. And I did grip tape art for my like local area. I was selling through Craigslist and stuff. Six years ago when I started the channel, uh, I had these boards in the background and they've kind of moved with me ever since. This is just kind of like decoration wall art. Uh, then moving on to this area right here, this, I believe these are Ikea shelving. The previous owner had these in here uh, before we even moved in. What I put up here are like some of my plushies as well as any action figures or figurines that I, I have up at the top area here. But then if you look towards kind of like the bottom here, I do have uh, just graphics cards. All these are unique graphics cards just for me to have uh, if I need to do a build because we all know how difficult it is to get graphics cards right now. Um, I need to at least keep one of as many graphics cards as I can, especially if I'm doing like comparison videos or anything like that. But yeah, that's what this cabinet is. I also have some hard drives here, like some two and a half inch, three and a half inch drives. I don't really use these that much anymore in build. You know, we've gone to SSDs and NVMe M.2 drives. So uh, these are just here in case I need them, but uh, it's just extra storage on uh, here. But now we can move on to this area, which is kind of like a wine cellar, like a wine bar type area. This was already built into the house. And if you remember from one of the land party stories, we used to have a fridge over in this section, but we didn't really use the fridge all too often. During the land, we actually used this to store all the, the drinks and stuff while we land down here. So that was nice. But other than that, we didn't really need it. It was kind of an older fridge too. I think it was the original in this house. So it's like over 20 years old by this point. So I took it out and now it's just a storage area. Um, just keeping cases here as well as a bunch of, as you can see there's packing material all around just in case uh, I need to pack anything to ship. But that's what this little cubby room is. And then now we are moving over to the main section of the studio. And this is where I spend uh, the majority of my time. Uh, this is where my main desk setup is and this where the PC is, as well as uh, the test bench and kind of like streaming setup. So for my desks, a lot of people ask me like what legs I used on these. Uh, and those are gonna be the Autonomous Business Pro Desk. They don't really sell them anymore. I think they rebranded it. Uh, and they sell it under a different name now. If I can find it, I'll leave a link in the description. But these are adjustable height desks, so I can bring them up and down uh, to my liking. On top of each of these desks, which is like my favorite part of this new setup, is two 98-inch IKEA kitchen countertops in black. The really nice thing about these are that they give me a ton of space to work with. I could never have enough desk space. I could always use more. I'm always filling it up with all the different stuff that I'm working on or just, I like having stuff all over the place. I was thinking about cleaning this up before doing this tour and I tidied up a little bit, but then I thought no one who actually gets anything done has like those perfectly clean spaces that you see on like Instagram where it's super minimalist and there's nothing there, no cables or anything like that. I am constantly moving stuff around. Like for my computer, if you take a look at the opening here, uh, I just have a ton of cables and stuff plugged in. I'm constantly replugging, moving things around, cameras, mics, and stuff like that. So there's no point in trying to make it super clean. This is how my setup actually is for the most part, having stuff around. It's usually probably messier. I did try to clean up a little bit, but if you look underneath the tables, oh, you can, that's a little bit embarrassing. <laughs> this is the volume control knob. I think I knocked it down earlier. But I do have some cable management going on. I guess I could tuck these up, but I was recently playing around with the webcam, so I had to move it. So for the most part, the cable management's not too bad. Oh, it just fell again. I'm gonna have to move that anyways. This thing right here, this RGB like tube lamp thing. You just need a lamp and uh, on the inside, you just wrap an RGB 
um, like an RGB strip around. So that's exactly what I did here. I found this lamp on sale, even though it's still kind of expensive for what it is. How it much? just stands here. I think the lamp ended up being like 80 bucks on sale. I got like a coupon or something with it. But yeah, there's uh, there's RGB strips wrapping down the entire thing. I think it just looks cool, this gigantic column of like RGB light. I think people in the latest stream asked me which RGB strips I use. All the RGB strips I use is Govi, and they're not like sponsoring or anything. I bought all of them from Amazon. But Govi um, RGBIC, which is their addressable RGB. Like if you look at the RGB running along the backs and the bottom of the tables, they're all the same one. So I can control all of them on the app. They do have a remote control which you can also control it too, but you can pick better colors up on the phone app. So yeah, I can make this green, make that green. So now they're all green. Red. I probably should have gone the Alexa one so that I could just say like, Alexa, turn the lights on and like do different lighting effects. But I was kind of cheap. The Alexa one costs a little bit more. And I thought, uh, just controlling on the, the phone would be fine. But now I'm kind of regretting that. There's a ton of different things on the table here. Uh, I don't want to go through it each and every single one of them. I'll have all the products listed on either on screen or in the description real quick if you're curious as to like what my monitors and stuff are. Uh, but in general, my setup is a 34 inch ultra wide 1440p, 144 hertz monitor, which the lovely Melissa who's behind the camera bought for me for Christmas one year because she didn't know what to get me and she said, send me something. So I sent her this, it was on sale at Costco. And then this is a 29 inch 1080p LG. This Acer monitor doesn't have really good color accuracy uh, it's fine for playing games and stuff but the colors are a little bit different compared to like if you looked on your phone or a more accurate IPS monitor so when I do my color grading for Photoshop or for uh, the videos I quickly move the program up here get the colors right and then you know export or save or whatever here is the overhead setup for when I do the streams and I'm unboxing or showing something or doing a build or working on a project. So this is actually made up of two separate monitor arms. This is similar to that stack monitor arm that I had over there. This is for a stack monitor setup as well as a piston driven monitor arm. So I bought two relatively cheap monitor arms on Amazon. I took them apart and I created this thing. These can support DSLR cameras, which was very important because they're really heavy because these are supposed to you know, hold monitors, which are a lot heavier than like these mic stands. These mic stands cannot hold heavy cameras at all. So that's why I had to put this to kind of get a stable setup going there. And there's a light here. On the walls, we have these Ikea black shelves. So when I initially put these up, um, I didn't really know what I wanted to put on them. Initially, I thought I was gonna put maybe figurines like from that shelf over there onto here, but as I was filling up the wall with stuff, I put the, the World of Warcraft original vanilla uh, canvas wall print that Melissa got me behind my main setup. And then I thought maybe it'd be cool to fill these up with the next expansions that came after vanilla. So then I got the Burning Crusade, Wrath of the Lich King, and Cataclysm, the smaller posters to put on there. We, we have RGB here, red, green, and blue. Not in that order, but because I just did it by the order of expansions. But another thing that's RGB, are the three biggest companies when it comes to the PC tech space, right? Uh, AMD, NVIDIA, and Intel. So just based on the size of these cabinets, it ended up working out that putting some product boxes on here, uh, it matches the theme because as you can see each level, like there's the green poster with the green NVIDIA boxes, blue poster with the blue Intel, and then red with the red. So it just kind of worked out. And then I also had these Jones Soda bottles made for one of the LAN parties, which has pictures. Each one has a different LAN party picture on it. Um, so that matched with RGB too. So we got RGB, not really RGB, going on in this corner here for decorations. People, I'm not sure how much people care about the decorations as much as they care about like the actual tech stuff, but hopefully, uh, Hopefully people like the story behind each of these things. But uh, over here, I have a vertical poster. Chrono Trigger was just a really important, like one of the important defining games in like my childhood. So I wanted to get something in the studio that represented uh, how much I liked the game. The entire table over here is essentially my workbench. This is where, this is where I do all of the benchmarking. So I've got a monitor that always stays here. Whatever build I'm working on, I will put here. And then I have a laptop with the capture card on this side. Uh, I capture using a capture card so that there's no um, 
effect on the performance based on you know trying to do either CPU or GPU encoding. I, I do everything on external capture card. So I'm while I'm doing the benchmarks, I'm like hitting record, throw OBS and stuff on here to record that. So moving on over here, uh, this is a uh, IKEA two by four cube shelf. It's just storage, but the three most important cubes are probably these three right here. Um, on this first one, I've got all my camera gear, like, so there's GoPro, batteries, mics, all the camera and audio equipment, uh, extra mics, here's a Blue Yeti for a backup in case the NZXT capsule fails. This is the battery shelf right here, which um, I recently got these new cables, which is a single USB cable that splits off into four different connectors. We got USB-C, you know, iPad or iPhone stuff. What, what is this connector called? Apple? Lightning. We got the lightning thing there and then a USB-C as well. So going to that was very nice because I have a ton of different battery chargers that uh, I it might be running at any time depending on how I use them to record. Um, got the iPad charging, got these RGB tube lights that Every time I use, I have to charge again. Camera batteries, all that stuff that goes here. And then up on this top one, stuff for PC maintenance and just working on the PC. So things like screw boxes, tools, along with basically these different screwdrivers, box cutters, things like that here. And then up here on top of this shelf is kind of like my Warcraft, World of Warcraft shrine. I've got some hats that Melissa got me from the official Blizzard store. I got some figurines. These are the box collector's editions of each of the expansions. So I have sealed versions from Cataclysm and up all the way up to Shadowlands. What I don't have are sealed versions of Burning Crusade and the Wrath of the Lich King and I don't even have a vanilla box. Those are expensive even if they're open. And then up here, this is a 15th anniversary server blade. This is the actual hardware that they put the WoW servers on. Every once in a while they retire them and then they sell them off for charity auction. I missed the original like vanilla WoW uh, server blades because I was a poor college student when they first sold those back in the day. Uh, so this is, you know, a good consolation prize. But now we're moving on to this area. This desk right here, this was given to me, this tabletop. Uh, it was given to me by my brother. And this is solid wood. It's almost the same dimensions of the countertops over there. And these are generally more expensive. These are probably three to four times as expensive as the countertops, which are like medium density fiberboard from Ikea for the countertops. So um, he upgraded his desk setup. So. He gave this to me and on one of the streams, I put legs, as you can see these legs that I got from Amazon. I attached these legs to it. And the way that I wanted to set up this table in the setup was to be directly in the middle of the room, kind of like an island. Like if you look at a house with the kitchen island, you can get around all sides of it because this is the backdrop for some of the uh, product B-roll shots that I do. The nice thing, about having this table here versus doing any work over there is that I can get lights on that side of the table and I can stand here and if I need to, if let's say I'm building something, I can get behind and work on it because over here, these walls are very limiting as to what I can do. Like I can't even put a lot like lights back here because of the shelves in the way as well as the wall and this arm, I can't attach it to any point of the table. I have to attach it only on like the open spots that won't hit the wall. And then right here, got all the different tripods that I've picked up over the years, um, as well as light stands, tube lights that I've built. And then we get to these wire shelves from Costco. So I picked up three of these total. I built two of them on stream. If you kind of take a look around Nothing is really organized. It's kind of a chaotic mess. And the way that I treat it is kind of like, you know, the Amazon warehouses products, even though they're like the exact same product, they aren't stored next to each other. They will be split up across like the entire factory. So like, um, like this graphics card, even though they might have 10 of them at a factory, they aren't all sitting next to each other. They're just randomly placed and they know exactly where they are. Um, that might be my explanation for being too lazy to actually organize this. But the nice thing about these wire uh, shelves is that they're basically see-through from like underneath, from the sides. They're not closed off like a typical cabinet or shelf is. So just from standing here, I can take a look around and know exactly where everything is because it's all visible. And now I'll come around and 
talk about these, which kind of pro tip, these are awesome for storing your cables. So anyone who's into like electronics or tech and PC and stuff, they'll have a ton of, you know, cables that they've uh, accumulated over the years, different cords, things like that. Now, typically what people do is they store it into like tubs like this, but these actually take up like a good volume of space. Whereas if you use these uh, shoe organizers or shoe holders for the doors, and they take up like no space because it's spread out vertically. The space in front of a door typically isn't used. So I have one over here and then one on this door. And the nice thing about them is that uh, they are see-through. So I can just take a look and see what cables are in which so I can pull. This area is just unfinished stuff that I need to organize, pack up, donate, get rid of. Um, these are all, so most of them are kind of old cases, but I keep them on hand because um, these ones in particular are special. So I've got, if you know me and you've been following me for a while, you know I'm obsessed with cases with handles. So I do have a collection going on here because over time, once cases are out of production, they're really hard to get a hold of. And uh, I actually want to restore these and keep them just because they're very unique cases. Like here's the Cool Master. I think this is called the Master Case Maker 5 but this has really good solid handles. Two of them right there. Uh, these are two cases from when, after I upgraded Jan and Casey's builds, they gave me their old computers. So I'm gonna, these have some pretty old parts in them as well as these cases are being pretty old, but they have nice beefy handles. So they're very easy to like carry around and move the land. Um, and I mean, this is a pretty iconic case, the Cooler Master Storm Scout case. Uh, a lot of people recognize this. I have this one that I kind of built recently, the Tacular. This one has a nice pretty solid handle on here. As well as the Cooler Master Q300L, which has the handles from the Q300P that were never released in the United States, which I'm kind of mad about because these are, these are really cool on the case, but um, they only sold them in Europe. They never sold these cases, uh, th they never sold these handles standalone in the US. And people ask me about it all the time, especially since this video, this video kind of blew up. Um, but other than that, just a bunch of boxes and storage. Um, I think I hit on pretty much everything I wanted to. There, I mean, there's, I could probably make the studio tour be like a two hour video because there's so many small things to talk about, but uh, I don't want this video to go on for too long. So if you saw anything from the video in the corner of your eye or something that I just glossed over, feel free to ask uh, down in the comments section. And if it's like a certain product that you saw and you were curious about or like the way anything is set up, uh, yeah, definitely know. let me know down in the comments because I didn't want this video to be like an hour plus long. It could have easily been that. Let's see how, how short I can edit this down to. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be the studio tour uh, to start me off 2022. Uh, very excited to have this space down here. It's been awesome so far. It's in a usable, workable like condition now. What else should I do? You're just going to get closer <laughs> as the video comes to an end. Babe, I think my lips are pretty chapped. Back up. <laughs> I'm trying to make you end it. Hurry up. I'm trying to. Give me one second. Let me think. This is all off the top of the head. I didn't even write anything down. Okay, bye. That's going to wrap it up for this studio tour though. I hope you all enjoyed. Um, I want to thank you as always for watching and for further supporting the channel. Uh, and I want to thank, of course, the channel members as always for their above and beyond support. Uh, no merch is available. I have links down in the description if you're interested in picking any of this up. But other than that, um, Melissa is complaining. She wants the video to end now. Her arms are probably tired from holding the camera up for like the last 30 to 45 minutes. What's up? You didn't even thank me. Oh yeah, that's what I also wanted to do. I wrote a note about that. <laughs> Give me one second, let me pull it out. What? Um, cause I have no idea how Melissa recorded this entire time. I can't see the viewfinder or like the LCD screen. So I'm not sure if her following me around shooting it My was good tired. or not. I'm probably gonna have to add a lot of B-roll on top of it just to transition better and to give better angles and lighting on some of the stuff that she was recording. I just showed her how to use the camera and then I said, all right, you decide on what, you know, if you're focusing on me or the thing I'm pointing at. So definitely let her know down in the comments uh, how you thought she did. That's gonna wrap it up for this video though. Uh, hope to see you down in the comments as well as in the next video and or stream. Bye. Thanks, babe.
嗯啊。